Good afternoon. We welcome you here to our study meeting, the West Valley City Council. We'll begin with our electronic statement as required by state law. Pursuant to Utah Code, West Valley City has determined that this meeting will be held electronically without an anchor location given the ongoing novel coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. West Valley City has determined the pandemic presents a substantial risk to the health and safety of those who may be present at an anchor location. This meeting will be held electronically. Members of the press and public are invited to view this meeting live on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash user slash WVCTV. Thank you. We note that we do have a quorum present tonight. Uh, we have uh, six members of our council in attendance. Councilman Hune, uh, we expect, will join us shortly. With that, then, we have our minutes of uh, May 11th. See if they're okay as they are or any changes. Move to approve the minutes of May 11th. Second. Then uh, hearing no further comments, without objections, the minutes will be approved. Hearing no objection, that passes unanimously. Uh, next, uh, reviewing our agendas for our regular meeting later tonight, as well as the Special Redevelopment Agency meeting. Uh, there was, uh, there were some minor changes. An item came off of our regular agenda. You should have all been notified of that. And then, uh, of course, the uh, item that was uh, added there from last council meeting as unfinished business. Any concerns, questions? If not, then we'll move on uh, and we have resolutions to take a look at this evening we'll begin with resolution 21-79 to authorize the city to enter into a development agreement with pent m redwood road llc acre and a half of property at 3870 south redwood road and let's see mr pastorek is going to Tell us a little bit about this. Thank you, Mayor. So this development agreement is very similar to one that the council considered a number of weeks ago for the Sunrise Baptist Church. Uh, so a, a portion of this property is zoned RM. And uh, because of a, a bill that uh, passed the legislature recently, the concern was um, having RM zoning without um, design standards for townhomes. And so this uh, particular development agreement uh, basically just incorporates the design standards we have already in our ordinance and, uh, and would apply that to this particular property that's already zoned RM. Uh, again, how this came about was that uh, as staff, we had looked at a number of properties to uh, rezone uh, proactively just in an effort to to ensure that we get design standards on the properties. And uh, because this particular owner agreed to a development agreement similar to a few other owners, then um, the 
the idea was to no longer rezone or downzone the property, but to do the development agreement. Okay, thank you. Council members, any questions? Hearing no further comments, then we'll move on to the next item. Resolution 21-80. Uh, this is uh, the city declaring its intention to reimburse itself for expenditures uh, relating to road improvements by issue, by issuing the bond and using that uh, to cover the proceeds. Uh, kind of a interesting little way of dealing with things, but uh, uh, it looks like uh, Jim is going to, uh, Jim Welch going to explain that in a little more detail. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. Uh, Jim Welch, Finance Director. This is a reimbursement resolution which the city sees periodically and uh, usually in anticipation of issuing bonds, uh, in this case for roads projects. You'll recall in the last legislative session, uh, House Bill 244 had appropriations of about two, well, it should be about $1.1 million annually for the next 15 years to West Valley City, specifically for roads projects. Now that's, that's, that's great, but a lot of our projects exceed that cost on an annual basis. And so we uh, have a need to spend a good portion of money on some of the infrastructure projects that Mr. Wilds Willardson has identified uh, up front. The way to accomplish that is we anticipate bringing to you in a couple of weeks, a parameters resolution, which will outline uh, how much is to bar be borrowed and uh, projects that it will be spent on and then we'll use that cash flow that the state has identified to pay those bonds. This resolution allows us to use the proceeds of that bond to reimburse the city for costs that it incurs before the bond is issued. Um, given COVID and how long it's going to take these bonds to finally actually be closed, uh, there are some costs that we'll, we'll incur before we can actually get those paid. I mean, get yeah, costs will incur before those bonds are actually issued and we need to have a facility to be able to reimburse ourselves for those costs and that's what this does. Council members. A general question, Jim, uh, these road projects, maybe this is better for Mr. Willardson, but uh, are those spread out over a period of time? And if so, what is that time? Or these projects will all be done in the next year, approximately? Uh, certainly, I could, I could address part of that. Uh, Mr. Wilson probably could do that a little bit better. Uh, the nature of the bonding is that the funds will be available for a short period of time to cover those large projects but uh, we don't expect those to, to go out over a long period of time. I don't know if Russ wanted input on that or not. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Um, you know, as, as Jim mentioned, Mayor, uh, some of the projects are ready to go right now. Uh, the one that in particular is the uh, 2700 West project from 41 to 4700 South that you've seen numerous right-of-way acquisitions come through the council. So that one we anticipate will um, start construction this summer. Um, we also anticipate construction on the 4700 South project between 4800 West and 5600 West um, starting this fall and continuing through summer of 2022. And we, we, um, we have an obligation to UDOT for betterments on Mountain View Corridor that we anticipate will be um, call due or that our payment will be required uh, this fall also. So we have those three that are rather immediate and the others will be spread over the next two to three years. Um, we haven't finalized that list yet. We will have that ready for you when the parameters resolution uh, comes before the council. Okay, so these funds will be spent in the next two to three years. The 1.1 million, the approximately that you mentioned, Jim, uh, will cover that, and that will make those funds. We'll spend all those that 
that's going to come in over the next 15 years. Yes, that is that is correct. Okay. So I have a question. When will when would the bond be issued? Um it it's been taking a little bit longer. COVID seems to have slowed everything down. Um, on this particular bond issue, we expect to, uh, we don't do this every time, but um, I've recommended to our, uh, to our municipal advisor and our bond council that we actually put out an RFP for rates and terms. So that will add a couple of weeks to it. I expect this probably August, if everything goes well. Well, doesn't sound like uh, many other questions, but I will just make a statement. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've uh, watched this quarter of a quarter from the state over a number of years and uh, seen it handled many different ways and uh, uh, have some challenges with that and also with what is done at the legislature at various times, so. But that's a bias that I have over a period of the last 20 years. So not that you're spending on anything untoward. It's just, I don't like the process that they go through at the state level. And they know that. <laughs> okay, hearing no other comments. Okay, we'll move to the next item on the agenda, Resolution 21-81. This is uh, for a contract with MC Green and Sons on uh, Begley Road and 5900 West Roadway project. And Mr. Wilson. All right. Yeah. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Yeah, this project is uh, something we brought several items to you in the past to get ready for construction on this on this next phase of the project. So we're pleased to finally bring the actual construction contracts to you so that we can get this road built. Um, this road, as a reminder, this is the extension of Beagley Road or 2540 South. This will end up connecting basically 7,200 West over to 5,600 West, essentially with these improvements in this phase being from about 6,100 West um, to the new intersection at 2,400 South that, that was just constructed by Mountain View Corridor. So we had our bid openings uh, last week. We were a little bit concerned. This is our first big bid opening for this construction season. And given the current market and the prices that we were scared we might see, it was a little bit nerve wracking, but we actually got some really uh, really competitive bids. So we were really excited about the bid opening. Um, the lowest responsible bid that came in was MC Green and Sons in just under $3 million. Uh, we're also excited to see them come in as a low bidder. They actually constructed the previous phase of 2540 South. So they know what our expectations are. They know what we, uh, uh, the quality uh, product that we expect. And so there's not gonna be a training process with this with this contractor, which is good. But uh, as mentioned, we received six bids. MC Green was the lowest bid. And so our recommendation to the council is to award the construction contract in the amount of just under 3 million and authorize the public works department to spend th no more than $3.1 million with change orders and other items um, that might come up during construction. Okay, council. Now, did, oh, can I ask one question? Did this company yes. have very many change orders on the last project they did for us? We actually had zero, zero change orders on the last phase of the project. Very good, thank you. Yep. On this, uh, once this is finished, uh, it appears that that will be connected ultimately down to Parkway Boulevard. So, so that is not a portion of this phase. So this phase will basically extend yes. Beagley Road East and then North. And so we'll have a future phase that will have to go South and connect to Parkway Boulevard. Right, but what I'm saying is oh. it will eventually do that. Correct, that is, that is the intent, yes. Now that's awfully close to the Mountain View Corridor. Is that 
Will that end up going essentially right along the corridor to the south? Yes. Or is there land in between there? Uh, Rocky Mountain Power has a, a large parcel down there where their transmission lines run. So ah. we'll actually be purchasing a public roadway easement through their property. And then our road will connect to Parkway Boulevard, right where the southbound Mountain View ramp is. So it will all be the same intersection. So if you were traveling south on our road, you could continue south and go straight on the Mountain View corridor. Ah. Okay. Interesting. Thank you for the information. Hearing... No further comments? Okay, we'll go to the next item on our agenda. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Uh, let's see, oh, 21, resolution 21-82, uh, cooperation agreement between us and UDOT for a pedestrian safety project. And Mr. Dan Johnson, looks like you're going to give us some additional information on this. Yes, thank you, and uh, it's good to be here with you today. This is a cooperative agreement between West Valley City and the Utah Department of Transportation that give, will give us access to uh, roughly $100,000 of state funds to construct uh, a sidewalk on a, a short segment of 50, or 3,500 South and about 5,200 West. So this is part of the Safe Sidewalks Program um, with the state that allows the you know, we apply for something every single year uh, for some segment of, of uh, sidewalk on a state highway, which is what these funds are programmed to do. And um, so every year we put in a couple of applications and this year we, it was, this little project was selected. And um, so we, with, with the execution of this agreement, it will give us access to build this short little piece of sidewalk. Okay, council members, any questions on this? Does this project, um, I see it connects on the east, but does it connect with any existing sidewalk at the west? No, at the west, it'll terminate at the traffic signal at the, at the pedestrian ramp to cross 3500 south. So it will not extend further west than that in any substantial form. So it really is a short, like a two lot um, piece of sidewalk connection. Okay, thank you. Yep. Dan, I oh go ahead. Um, I'm I'm glad to see this portion worked on. Uh, I'm I'm concerned about the, the the sidewalk in this area of 3500 South. You know, it's a pretty good sidewalk on the on the south side until you come to that one building that forces you to walk into the road. Yeah. And and the other side, we really need to to keep that going further west. So I hope that that's that we continue making that a priority. Yeah, uh, we have frequent conversations with UDOT about that, about the, um, there's the, the building on the south side and the building on the north side um, that are both problematic for, for various reasons. And uh, we're, UDOT has, has heard from us frequently and, and we're not stopping on that, so. Especially with the, the new a multi-family development at the corner of 56th and 35th. Yeah. This, this, we, this really needs to be a priority. And darn it, UDOT, we need to get them going on this. Yep, for sure. We will continue that. Hearing no further comments. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we go to our consent agenda. We have two items there. Resolution 21-83, a delay agreement at 6644 West, 2100 South, and Resolution 2184, uh, the traditional 2700 West easement purchase agreement, perpetual and temporary construction easement at 4317 South Stafford. Any questions on these council members? Hearing none, then all right, 
We'll go on to our next item, which is a communication item on our electrical vehicle charging stations with some additional information that will be available. Mr. Pastorik will be sharing some comments with us. Thank you, Mayor. So at our last discussion on this topic, there were two outstanding questions uh, from the council. So first being what are uh, other cities doing to promote uh, electric vehicle charging stations in residential developments? And then the other question was, uh, could the city require wiring for a level two charger, which is the 240 volt charger in all new homes. So I'll, I'll tackle that first question first and get to the next one. So I looked, I found four examples of cities that do varying types of requirements for electric vehicle charging infrastructure. So the first is close, close by Salt Lake City. So they have an ordinance on the books right now that requires uh, one parking space for every 25 in a multifamily, like an apartment development, have an actual uh, charging station, okay? They're also uh, working on an ordinance revision right now that would require in an apartment development that uh, in addition to the one charging station for every 25 vehicle parking spaces, that 20% of these spaces would be electric vehicle ready, meaning that they would have conduit to the, those 20% of the 20% of stalls that could eventually have the elect the uh, charging stations added. And so it's just essentially uh, providing the conduit and making it easier down the road to add that to, uh, should the demand arise. So that was Salt Lake City. Uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, they took um, a little bit more aggressive stance, at least when it comes to like single family and townhomes. So for apartments, they require that one stall uh, in five would be uh, have conduit provided. So they didn't actually require charging stations, just required the conduit. But then for uh, single family and townhomes, they actually did require the conduit in each unit. So that was Atlanta, Georgia. Um, if you look at uh, uh, Palo Alto, California, uh, they also, for like single family homes, required conduit at a minimum. And then for uh, multifamily residential, they required an actual uh, outlet for each unit in multifamily. And then finally, the last example uh, was uh, Madison, Wisconsin. There for uh, multifamily, so like apartments, they had a requirement of at least 10% uh, of the parking being um, electric vehicle ready. So again, providing the conduit and then 2% of stalls would actually have a charging station. And then they had another interesting um, provision in their code that said it was basically a, a schedule that uh, every five years, their ordinance automatically ramped up the percentages so that over time, uh, new you know, developments in say five years from now will be uh, held to a higher standard than developments right now, just in anticipation of the demand growing, I assume. So those were uh, some examples of, of how cities approach the issue. Now on the question of whether we could require um, actual wiring to uh, in all new homes. So in talking with our legal department and looking at the building code, the building code already requires a just a standard outlet you know, that you would have in your home in a garage. And so in talking with legal, their opinion was that we, we could not require uh, the conduit or, or wiring because that would be something that would be above and beyond building code, which uh, at least in Utah, we can't do. And so one thing we could do is um, uh, we can, when, when you start looking at say surface parking lots or parking structures, when you're talking about apartments, that falls under a different uh, code. So you have a code that applies for single family homes and townhomes, and then you have more um, for apartments or considered essentially commercial buildings. So we could uh, have 
requirements there for either surface parking or parking structures for those that type of residential. Now, another approach would be that um, we could, as part of a development agreement, for example, if someone comes in and, and is rezoning a property, we could include, you know, conduit or wiring or you know a certain number of chargers as part of a development agreement. So that we could do. And so um, again, just hopefully that helps to understand what the approach that some other cities are doing. And then if we wanted to look at uh, encouraging or requiring it in some situations, what options would be available to us. Steve, in our RIS zone, do we require charging stations or wiring for charging stations? We do require the, the charging station in the RS zone, but the, the distinction there is that um, they're requesting the zone change and then we do a development agreement. Okay. And so that, that's how we're able to get around that in that case is that they're, they're essentially volunteering to sign up for those standards. Gotcha. So could we include as some sort of a, an option that they choose this instead of some, some other higher standard? I mean, I'm trying to think just on a regular single family home development. I guess they just have to follow the building code. They have to build to our standards. Um, but we don't see a way to include this as something they would have to do or that they could choose to do maybe instead of something else. Right now, um, because of the building code standard, at least for, for single family and townhomes, we don't see a way of, of requiring it outside of the development agreement. Um, again, we, right now, we see that as the best way to address that on, on those, those types of housing. Well, I would think that we would put that on the list of things that we want to regularly ask for as we create development agreements for any zone change residential. And if I may, just for clarification, is the, the when you look at the different um, levels of investment, the, the least expensive is providing conduits. So you're basically just providing the pipe and the wall without the wire that then, you know, in the future, the wire can be fed through. And so you're not having to tear out, you know, tear up walls. You're just providing the space for it. The next level up is actually providing the, you know, the wiring and the, the outlet. Uh, and actually, you know, the breaker in the box, and then of course the, the third being the most expensive is you know the wiring plus the actual charging unit. And so those um, just if as we talk you know with developers in the future is is the is the interest in in the conduit or or more on the, the other end of the spectrum. My preference would be wired for 240 volts. And I don't, I guess I don't understand if they, we just have a 240 volt plug that's wired and hot and a breaker on the wall, if they can plug their electric vehicle into that, or do they need some additional charging station? There, there would be additional equipment needed to, uh, to um, in addition to the, the actual plug. Okay, but that could be supplied. I mean, I'd like to have hot wiring 240. And if they didn't use it for a charging station, like, uh, Councilwoman Lang mentioned before, maybe they use it for a welder or something else. But uh, I think I don't think it's too much more to require that uh, they have a 240 outlet in the garage. Uh. Steve, you're done. Okay. Steve, I, I'm thinking about uh, that job, which encourage them to do it because they make decisions by themselves. They want to have an electronic car or other vehicle they want to do. And that's their decision. But density, I think that we lock in. <clears throat> and for example, I want to rent a unit there and I want to go with the electronic car, but I cannot because developer already locked in with the city is uh, they have, they don't have a, the conduit, they don't have the power for me to hook up for my car. So I cannot make the decision for myself, I de depend on someone else. And I think we can, because of multiple, so many people there, 
but it, residential people is only one family and they can make decisions in themselves and they can do it or they don't want to do it. And so maybe we encourage them to do it. But I think density, we need to have something there because we have the tenants, you know, in this case, because they cannot make decisions for themselves and we just step in to do something for them. All right. And to, to that point, some cities have chosen to just address the apartments for that reason, because they, the, the thought was that, you know, an individual homeowner could choose to add the, you know, the, the infrastructure later. Um, but, but so, um, but yes, we could have a, a standard for, um, for apartments. Okay. Steve, the examples that you used uh, for places that had uh, tried this, did that imply since you only used one in Utah that Salt Lake City was the only city that's doing this? Um, so I, uh, when I was doing my uh, search, uh, Salt Lake was the one that, uh, that, came, that came up. I, um, I can do further looking to see if there are other Utah cities, but just in my uh, research that I did, I didn't see other examples in, in Utah. Any other questions? Hearing none. Thank you, Ms. Pastorek. We'll move to the next item on our agenda. No comments, no action, no further data. Okay. Council calendar, any questions on the calendar? Hearing none, we'll move to our new business potential future agenda items. Hearing none. Council give me, reports. Give me one minute. I think I have. Okay. One. Okay. Well, we'll. Oh, never mind. It's not a future agenda. It's a comment later. Okay. Well, you can make the comment whenever you would like. Well, I can do it now. There's two different ones. Um, I had a lady that said the park strip at 7070 West, 3500 South. The water needs to be turned on. The water is the lawn is burning up. And as I understand from her, it's our property. <clears throat> and then the other thing is I had a complaint about the inlets to city or to Centennial Park on the south side of the park. And that one, it's all of the stub roads that we left in case that ever became a development. And they seem to be a big problem with weeds and tall grass every year. So I didn't know if we need to look in the future at maybe getting rid of those like we did some of the ones going into other developments and just maybe having a small walk for the neighborhood to get into those instead of a two lane drive. And I think there were three of them and it's along 3325 South. So Karen, these are like step robes, robes that end at Centennial Park? Correct. You know, before Centennial was built, we had subdivisions go in and the council hadn't decided at that time to make a park. So they left stub ropes for future development. But now that we have the park there, the stub ropes do not seem like a necessity. Yeah, I don't <clears throat> giving up the park, at least not while I'm on the council, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, we could look at having a vacation of those roads and see if the uh, neighbors that are there, the residents that are there, that could be part of their property, they can take care of it and enjoy it. Yes. Whether they're vacated or not, uh, if we don't do that, at least they need to be uh, something done to finish them off with, you know, curb and gutter or whatever. And there's curb and gutter on the east and west side. It's just, yes. it goes to a chain link fence at the park yeah. and it's unsightly. Yeah, that's what I meant was under the chain yeah. link fence. 
oh, or true. between the park and the road. Yeah. yeah, something needs to be done there to finish that and just whatever it is. Maybe staff can take a look at that and make some recommendations if it's to vacate or whether it's to finish it off or uh, I don't know, do you want to have access there to the park from that subdivision? They're Seems pretty like spread out. So I think people would like access at those places. And yeah, I don't know which well, will be the cleanest finish for us. Uh, well, maybe staff can look at that as well and say, does that cause any problems, you know, maintenance wise or whatever, and just have them come back with some recommendation. Yeah, it's time to finish that off. I agree. We'd also need to look, Mayor, at the, uh, would it cause a problem in the neighborhood with people wanting to get into the park, especially where along that south side, which is a lot of athletic fields, uh, uh -huh. parking in the neighborhood and walking through rather than coming in and parking in the park parking. Very true. I always look at the negative side. <laughs> Actually, we have had that problem before, haven't we? Yes. yes. Yeah, we don't want to create problems. We want to solve them. Any further comments? Then we'll go to council reports. Mr. Christensen, I know you have one from Western Growth. We held our Western Growth Coalition yesterday. Uh, we had a, a presentation from the Salt Lake County Parks and Recreation, uh, what they've done with their park plans and what they're planning on doing. Uh, a couple of local ones that uh, would affect residents of West Valley. Uh, in Kearns, the Ochre Park, Ochre Park uh, is doing some improvements. It's been basically an athletic park. They're putting in some playgrounds now so that uh, they're not just the athletics come to it and it's been very well received. Uh, they're developing, they have 64 acres in Magna they're developing about half of that into a uh, regional park for Magna with athletic fields, playgrounds, splash pads, et cetera. And uh, they're supposed to have that completed next month. So we might wanna keep an eye on that. Uh, they also talked about Pioneer Crossing. And when he first said that, I thought, what are we doing down in Utah County? Because that's where I know Pioneer Crossing is the road that goes from I-15 to Redwood Road. But this is being developed as part of the Jordan River Recreation Zone next to the Cultural Center, the Pioneer Crossing Park. And it'll be a, a county park. Uh, it should be complete within a year, they said. Uh, and so it, uh, it will give us a little more parkland down there uh, in between what they've just sold back to us and uh, what we already have. So we'll see what happens with that. And one thing they said uh, that interested me in each of these parks as they're developing them, they have finally decided that if they have a maintenance building within the park, their maintenance crews can house somebody in that building and take care of maintenance all the time, rather than having to call somebody out from a central maintenance facility and come out and do some work. And so they're putting a maintenance uh, facility in each of these new parks and staffing it with a, an employee. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's something we want to look at. It sounded pretty expensive to me to keep an employee on in each park, but if it cuts down on graffiti and things like that, it might be worth it. They also mentioned that Lodestone, uh, which is in our boundaries, uh, it's a well-used park. Uh, in fact, they've had to make repairs on much of the 
playground equipment just because of use. Uh, not misuse, but just use. It's so well used by the neighborhood and uh, that it's a, a real need there to keep that going. And then they mentioned some other uh, parks that are being developed down in the southwest portion of the, of the county. Then Western Growth talked about uh, the upcoming special session of the legislature. Uh, there's a lot of money that the legislature is accepting uh, from the federal government and uh, Recovery Act and things like that. And they suggested that each mayor get a letter asking that mayor to contact the local representatives on the legislature to let them know of the needs, uh, especially in transportation uh, along Bangator. If they have got extra money now, they can fund everything now rather than five years down the road and things like that. And I think you probably got that letter this afternoon because I got a copy of it about 3.30 this afternoon. So I'll let you work on that as you want to. Want to. I, I think if yeah, sometimes absolutely. Western growth feels that they're, they've got enough oomph that we can change the legislature's mind in a day. Oh, sure. And, and I've noticed that that doesn't always work. <laughs> So, but that's what we discussed yesterday, and uh, they are going back to uh, uh, hybrid meetings, uh, some in, uh, in person, some on Zoom type of thing. So we'll be meeting again next month. See how good our one day stand <laughs> did with the special session. <laughs> Any other reports? I've got one, Mayor. Um, just this past Saturday, there was a neighborhood organized uh, canal trail cleanup event. And uh, just wanted to recognize Craig Thomas and the neighborhood services um, for providing, I mean, garbage bags, gloves, hand sanitizer, those little uh, trash grabbers. I don't know what the technical term is. Uh, water coolers and even uh, coordinated a dumpster. Um, for folks that were out there, um, just that stretch between uh, the Mountain View corridor and uh, about 70 to 100 West. Um, along the way, there were a lot of uh, great comments from folks both participating and actually the neighbors that whose properties border uh, the canal trail. And, um, you know, a few issues that did come up in terms of uh, graffiti management of uh, folks actually driving uh, on that north side, the gravel side. Um, and I get that that's a complicated one. It involves different jurisdictions, different, uh, and the city actually steps up in a lot of ways that um, they aren't technically required to in terms of that jurisdiction over the canal trails uh, there. Um, but did want to recognize um, uh, the great support from the city side in this uh, community organized event. Uh, hope that we can do more of that and maybe even um, now that the trails will start being utilized more as the weather is uh, nicer now, um, uh, maybe a communication on what those efforts uh, and resources are that we actually are uh, allocating towards uh, mitigating the graffiti, uh, trespassing and that type of thing so that we can better educate uh, our neighbors and residents here uh, and find better ways uh, to also collaborate with the neighborhood groups along the tra trail uh, to maybe even boost um, these community organized events as well. Thank you. Anything else? With that then, there's no need for a closed session. That uh, concludes our uh, agenda for this study meeting, unless a council member has something to bring up. Not hearing anything, then why don't we adjourn? So moved. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Without objection, we are adjourned. Hearing no objections, that was unanimous. Thank you.